You know, normally I start these reviews with some sort of a witty remark, but I just can't think of one for this. I want to just jump right on in and tell you about how extraordinary this game was, so that's what I'm going to do. Here we go. Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, the long-awaited sequel to 2020's Final Fantasy VII Remake, the magical entry point into an ambitious trilogy aiming to recreate the original classic from 1997. The game finally arrived on the 29th of February this past year, and after a long two months of me taking my sweet, sweet time with this game, I finally completed it. Now, I'll be honest when I say that getting around to this review was no easy task, mainly because once I finished the game, the game in its entirety had been living rent-free in my head and had been causing me to feel empty for days. I mean, that's just how you feel when something you've been waiting for for a long time arrives, you experience it, and then that's it. It's over. And to say that I'd been awaiting this game would be an understatement, since as most of you may know, the original Final Fantasy VII is not only my favorite game in this sprawling franchise by Square Enix, but it's also my favorite game of all time. And the first installment of its remake that came out close to four years ago now more than delivered for me. And I could not believe just how wonderfully it brought the world of the game to fruition with modern generation technology. So naturally, I was salivating for the second part of the trilogy with Rebirth here, which aimed to recreate the original game's sprawling world that the main characters venture into during the second chapter of their story. But I'll admit, knowing just how magical the overworld of the original Final Fantasy VII was, I was worried that it would be an impossible undertaking for Creative Business Unit 1 of Square Enix to bring this setting to life in a modern scale. But they did it. And I'm just going to say it right now, Final Fantasy VII Rebirth ended up being not only better than Final Fantasy VII Remake, but it is the greatest Final Fantasy game in general that I have ever played since the original Final Fantasy VII. Simply put, almost everything about Final Fantasy VII Rebirth elevates the original game, and the characters are the epitome of this. The original game's rich cast is the main reason why I love it so much, and there's no denying that Cloud Strife, his friends, and the journey that they embark on to put an end to Sephiroth's maniacal goals is one that left a strong impression on many, myself included. What I love about the game's characters more than anything, though, is their complexity. How, despite coming from largely traumatic backgrounds, they possess softer sides too, and use their troubled past to band together and become stronger over the course of the game. And the way in which these relationships and the characters themselves evolve is always so satisfying to see. Final Fantasy VII Remake understood this, and that's one of the reasons why it was received so well. But Final Fantasy VII Rebirth elevated this, where the characters and their relationships were not only portrayed how we remembered them from the original, but were also improved upon and thoroughly fleshed out. What I adored about so many of the conversations and interactions between the characters in this game was how they made sense in the context of the original, whilst also surprising me with new dynamics that were never there in the first place but that made sense and added so much more depth nonetheless. Every single moment between Cloud and Tifa specifically, in my opinion, exemplified this best, but every main character in general had their time to shine and never once took the backseat in this story. In fact, the way that this game is structured is such that each major act is character-centric and focuses heavily on that character's backstory and personal arc, whilst expanding on the world building, which is precisely what the second half of the original Final Fantasy VII focused on anyway, as you explore the open world and visit locations pertaining to your party members, all of which have been beautifully recreated here in Rebirth. And from the big character cutscenes to the smaller banter between party members on your travels, all of which encompass a wide spectrum of emotions ranging from seriousness to lightheartedness, you really are able to tell just how much the developers understood what made these characters so special to players in the first place? You're getting in on this too? Solely as a means to study human leisure activities. <laughs> no, excuse me. Doggo's just seen it all. He's My bored of doing all the doggo things. Sir. But I'm afraid animals are not allowed to participate. I'll screw you. But I know mere animals. <laughs> oh shit, look at that. Red's all up in his face, wants to speak to the manager. You tell him, doggo. I want to speak with your manager. He literally wants to speak with the manager. <laughs> and it was so hard for me to stop grinning like an idiot throughout it all. 
for just knowing that fact made me so happy. I legitimately could not believe what I was witnessing and hearing between these characters in the most wonderful way possible in part due to the nature of their conversations, but also unexpectedly because of how real they sounded, if that makes sense. And that's due to how the localization is second to none in this game. Historically, the voice direction and localization of the English versions of games within the Final Fantasy VII franchise have been wildly inconsistent and at most serviceable, but this game was on another level with its English translations. So much so that one could plausibly make the assumption that it was written in that language in the first place. I just knew that when I heard a little girl I faced off against in a card game yell out Gen Z slang, that this game was going to be something special. Sometimes you gotta take the L if you're serious about your game. <laughs> take the L? Listen, kid, you got what it takes to Yo. be I bet my bottom gill on it. Now why don't you Dude, the, the localization in this game though? Thank you for playing cards with me, mister. <laughs> Did she just say take an L? Oh my god, I love it. I can't believe how good the writing is. Rebirth combines so many ingredients that make for an excellent game in the context of its characters. Incredible localization like we were talking about, phenomenal voice performances, a stellar understanding of the characters on the part of the developers, and even a new affinity system that affects Cloud's relationships with his fellow party members based on dialogue options that he can pick. Say, do you remember a guy named Emilio from Nibelheim? Uh, oh fuck. Okay. The only person from the village I remember is you. Huh? Nice. Oh. Saved it. Rest. Right. This game is all about camaraderie. And the camaraderie between Cloud and his companions, and that not only shows in the dialogue and the story, but also, of course, the combat. Final Fantasy VII Rebirth takes the extraordinarily satisfying combat of Remake, which struck a fine balance between real-time combat and classic turn-based battle inputs, and further iterates on it, mainly through fully fleshing out a system that was introduced in Remake's Intermission DLC, and that's the Synergy System, which allows every character to unleash deadly team-up attacks upon enemies. And in true Remake fashion, every single one of these attacks look absolutely gorgeous and cinematic. Everything else is the same as in Remake. Characters build up ATB through basic attacks, and then use this ATB to cast powerful spells or weapon abilities, many of which are tethered to brand new materia orbs and weapons, some original and some reimagined from the original game. But now, performing these ATB actions allows party members to build up synergy points that can be used to unleash the aforementioned team-up attacks. And with the addition of new characters to the fray, such as Red 13, Kate Sith, and well, kind of, sort of Yuffie, considering that she was in Remake's DLC, but worked very differently in that. Final Fantasy VII Rebirth allows players to experiment with so many different compositions, given the vastly different playstyle of each new character, all of whom, by the way, are exceptionally fun to play. Yes, even Kate Sith. I hated how much I enjoyed playing him, and couldn't believe how much of a glow-up he got since the OG. I loved it. Soldier Mogul class. Uh, raises limit levels, that's good. <laughs> oh my god, we straight up killed him! Wow, dude, what the hell was that damage? What was that damage? I wasn't expecting that much damage. What? Oh my god. Cloud jumping on a stuffed Moogle might just be the most powerful thing in the whole damn video game. And I dig it. <laughs> Let's go. Who knew that was a hidden strength that all soldiers possess? Jumping on stuffed teddy bears. That's it, boys. That's all you gotta do. That's how we're gonna defeat Sephiroth. There is just so much new and exciting everything in this game. From the characters to your equipment like I alluded to earlier, and even the fearsome yet beautiful summons who just like the ones in Remake, you'll need to battle first to obtain, and then beckon during battle to assist you in some wonderfully cataclysmic ways. And on the topic of the summons real quick, I have to say that I seriously cannot wait to see the remaining few summons who didn't make it into this one in the final game of this trilogy, especially considering who they are in the original Final Fantasy VII, and what they're capable of. And the enemy variety too in this game was amazing. There were so, so many different enemies and bosses to battle through, many of whom are familiar from the original game, 
And while there may have been one or two really funky enemies from the original who were missing in this game, that I was really looking forward to battling here in an epic way, just like with the Hell House from Final Fantasy VII Remake, I was still more than satisfied with this game's lineup of fiends and the challenges that they posed, especially considering that each and every one of them had unique and oftentimes complex requirements for being weakened or pressured, as the game puts it, by the player, which really made me contemplate my plan of attack at all times while fighting, so all in all, the combat is the best it has ever been in this game. And the freedom with your characters you now have is great. Combining the characters traveling with Cloud and the fact that you're now in an open world, Rebirth gives you the freedom to choose any two members of your party that you want Cloud to fight alongside, as long as you're outside any special story moment where you're forced to play a certain comp, that is. And speaking of the open world here, now would be a good time to discuss it, as it's one of the biggest, no pun intended, aspects of Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. So like I said at the start of this video, Square Enix faced this seemingly impossible task of recreating the world of Gaia from the original FF7 with modern generation graphics, technology, and game design standards. Whereas Final Fantasy VII Remake faced the relatively easier task of recreating the city of Midgar, which featured largely linear gameplay progression, Rebirth faced the challenge of recreating the sprawling open world that lay beyond the city which blew our minds when we first set foot in it in the original game. And somehow, they not only managed to wow us again with Rebirth's rendition of this moment, All right, let's get this show on the road, people! Oh my god. I'm sorry, game. I'm not, I'm, I see where it is. I'm not processing them. Just let me, let me run through what I'm seeing on the left of the screen right now. Please, game! <laughs> Holy shit. Okay, game. Yes, I can craft things. I get it. And I can also run through fields of green that we have been waiting eons to see in FF7 Remake. <laughs> we made it, guys. We're in the open world of Gaia. Holy shit. So pretty. But they ensured that this feeling of awe would never leave us until the very end of the game. Every single region from the original game up until the Forgotten City is featured within Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, and is made more expansive, intriguing, and beautiful than ever. And I will say that even though Rebirth doesn't take any strides to reinvent the wheel or push boundaries with its open world, which feels largely outdated and predates games like Breath of the Wild and Elden Ring in its physical design, this never once reveals itself to be an issue. And the reason I say this is because the experience of traversing the world is enriched by the wonderful aesthetics of the game. Things like the liveliness of each town and settlement, the fun interactions between characters, modes of traversal such as chocobo riding and buggy driving, and the side quests that feel so unique and exciting as they shake up the gameplay and offer interesting character scenarios make the world feel engaging to work through. And even though there are some repetitive activities that are the exact same from region to region, just with a different coat of paint, there are still more than enough unique battles, side quests, and even minigames to keep things fresh. The latter of which blew my damn mind. Even though I did mention that Rebirth doesn't reinvent the wheel, and even though it does instead opt to take cues from a myriad of other games in the past, which isn't a bad thing considering that most of these cues are implemented very well here, the one thing that I can nevertheless positively say that I have not seen being implemented to the extent that it was in this game was the minigames. I will need more than two hands to count the sheer number of unique and extraordinarily fun minigames that there were to engage with in this game, all of which amounted to a staggering amount of content being offered by the game, especially towards the end. Like, I kid you not, by the time I ventured past the point of no return for the game's final dungeon, I clocked in over 145 hours of game time, the final few of which were spent completing each and every side activity left to do in the open world, all of which took me roughly 3-4 to four streams that were each over 8 hours long to complete. And the sheer variety of unique minigames throughout the entire experience, not just this final act, made it so that there was not a single point during the game where I felt bored, burned out, or that there were lulls in the gameplay. 
Not only does Rebirth feature Queen's Blood, which is the most fun card game that I've ever had the pleasure of playing in a video game, and I say this as a person who inherently does not like card games, but it also finds ways to squeeze in so many fun and eccentric activities as you progress through the story. With things like chocobo racing, chocobo flying, fall guys, or should I say frog guys, Tifa being the best grill as always, and destroying the heck out of a piano, and so, so much more. All of this quelled a big issue that I had with the last major Final Fantasy game that I played, which was Final Fantasy XVI. A game that, despite being great overall, had a serious lack of variety when it came to its gameplay content outside of the combat, leading to very quick burnout. And next to that, Final Fantasy XVI just wasn't a very challenging game, in my opinion. But this was another thing that Rebirth fixed. And that said, my personal favorite part of all the activities here in FF7 Rebirth was the degree of challenge they posed, which by extension made the game harder. While none of these optional minigames are inherently difficult to beat the first time in order to get a low tier completion rank and or reward, the beauty of them is that if you so desire a tougher challenge in order to attain a more prestigious rank and or reward, then you'd have access to one and you have to put in significantly more effort, sometimes leading to hours upon hours worth of gaming, which while brutal, would make for some of the most euphoric reactions once you finally beat them. Reactions like this. No! 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 no, 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 no. Stop! 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 stop, 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 stop. Thank fuck! Let's go! <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ! Oh my god, that ending was so fucking scary, dude. Oh my god. <laughs> Let's fucking do this. Let's go. Nuked. That ending was fucking terrifying, man. Jesus. My heart skipped like 15 beats. And this. Let's go! Oh my fucking god! <laughs> yes! Yes! I'm so happy right now. <laughs> I'm so fucking happy. We got the star on Let the Battles Begin, the hardest piece in Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, on the fastest speed, and on my first attempt up this stream. I practiced so hard for this, but man, it just feels so good. Being able to experience feelings like these are why I adore optional challenges in single player games, and why I was also extra appreciative that on top of just the minigames having harder variations to complete, many of the optional combat scenarios pulled no punches either, with most of them being devastatingly difficult, thereby leading to more of these happy face reactions. Oh wait, we got them. <gasps> yes! Dude, 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 it doesn't matter if Cloud dies now. It doesn't matter, we got him. Yes! Because we beat the Mind Flayer first, that was a challenge. Oh my goodness. We did it, guys. We beat the Mind Flayer. Then we can kill these fuckers, finally, without having to like have nightmares at night. Yes! All right, let's go get wrecked. Ah, oh, fucking finally, man. The same could be said for the main scenario battles, which while not as challenging as some of the optional side content, were always keeping me on my toes due to the game featuring a really cool dynamic difficulty option that ensured all the enemies would scale with me until the very end of the game. All this has me really excited to dive back into the game shortly with New Game Plus, where I won't just be able to replay every chapter on a new hard mode difficulty, but I'll also be able to take on unique side challenges and activities that are exclusive to the replay. God, this game just has so much content, and I seriously cannot be more grateful for it all, especially once again, considering how good it all is. And last but certainly not least, the aspect that serves as the most wonderful and flavorful topping on the rest of the aesthetics and gameplay elements that make traversing the world such a joy is... Wait, what's that? What's that sound? What is that? The music. Final Fantasy VII Rebirth has what is, in my opinion, the zenith of any soundtrack I've ever listened to as part of the Final Fantasy franchise. Of course, many of the beloved tracks from the original Final Fantasy VII, composed by the legendary Nobuo Uematsu, have been rearranged so masterfully here, just like in Final Fantasy VII Remake. 
Oh my god, that little... The music, bro. Oh my god, the music. Yeah, this is called Heart of Anxiety in the original. And this is what plays in Nibelheim. And it sounds freaking incredible. Dear God, this game. I'm just, as always, smitten by the music. But on top of this, even some of the brand new tracks with Masashi Hamazu and Mitsuto Suzuki were absolute bangers and have been stuck in my head ever since I first heard them. Enemies! Enemy spotted. Oh, shit, yeah, I'm excited for this battle arrangement. Oh, shit, the music's fucking cool. Big Ants Ice. Oh, shit, they're vocals. I mean, shit. You know a game is good when one of your top three favorite tracks from it is a dog barking. Enough said. Now the only downside I could identify with the open world here in Final Fantasy VII Rebirth had to do with the physical traversal of it. Chokeable writing while satisfying and featuring an action that allows you to follow sense and hunt for treasure does admittedly feel a little bit clunky at times as you'll frequently run into a lot of rocks, bumps, and cliffs, all of which impede your momentum quite frequently, with the latter being particularly frustrating with certain chocobos, where it feels like you should be able to fly off of the cliffs to get to the terrain below, but you can't. A similar thing can be said for Cloud himself. As he runs, you'll be able to press circle to perform certain terrain actions like climbing over objects and hopping off of ledges, but at times it does feel like certain ledges he should be able to jump down aren't actually meant to be hopped off of and vice versa. There were two regions in particular in this game where the level design really seemed to be working against me due to a lot of hills and cliffs being present that made it confusing as to how you were meant to navigate and work around them to get to the objectives on your map, which was more than a little frustrating at times. And on the topic of level traversal, I am happy to say that Rebirth largely fixed a pretty glaring issue that was in Remake, which was level pacing and padding. There were more than a few major locations and story beats in Remake where I felt like I was overstaying my welcome and just wanted to move on. In Rebirth, they kept this to a minimum, and the pacing was largely excellent. There was one specific moment in the story though that stood out like a sore thumb, and literally the only one in the game where I did prefer the original game's approach to both the design of the location and the pacing of it, which were both kind of a letdown here. But like I said, Rebirth largely fixed this problem, which was more prevalent in Remake, and a good 90% of the game was paced well and was an improvement over its predecessor in this regard. Also, it is worth noting that one of the two locations that I was talking about that had problems with traversal was admittedly my favorite one in the game, and I will die on that hill despite its issues. And that's because it was the Gungaga region. Can't wait to see what Gungaga is like. Oh my god, new music. <laughs> oh my god. I can't believe what I'm hearing. Dude, the ambiance though, holy sh- I- I can't even believe what I'm playing, what I'm hearing, what I'm seeing. This is fucking incredible. Both due to its powerful and moving overall music, and of course, because of all the Crisis Core fan service. That's right, if you're a big fan of Final Fantasy VII Crisis Core, the prequel to the original game, then you will love Rebirth as a whole, since it takes clear strides to provide some amazing references and fan service to folks like me who adored Crisis Core and its main character Zack. And without getting into spoilers whatsoever, the Gungaga region does just that, on top of just being aesthetically wonderful. And speaking of Zack, Crisis Core, and by extension the rest of the Final Fantasy VII franchise, I think that this is a good time to touch on the story of Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. Just like in the second act of the original game, the premise follows Cloud and his companions leaving the city of Midgar where they went up against the evil Shinra Corp 
after realizing that Sephiroth is an even greater threat to the planet, and must be hunted down in an epic chase that spans the entire globe. Rebirth largely maintains the same core narrative of the original game, whilst elevating and fleshing out so many of the original beats in some truly amazing ways that I could greatly appreciate. Now of course, the elephant in the room is the new overarching and contentious plotline that was introduced with Final Fantasy VII Remake and wasn't present in the original, and I won't elaborate on what that is for spoiler reasons. But I will say that elements of this new storyline are sprinkled throughout Rebirth and culminate in a mind-bending scenario that leaves you with many questions by the end of the game, just like with Remake. However, whereas Remake left me feeling cautiously optimistic about Rebirth, specifically due to how I wasn't sure about how much of the original game the developers were going to compromise in favor of this new storyline, Rebirth has me feeling exceptionally excited for the currently untitled third and final game of this trilogy, considering how all my concerns going into Rebirth were put to rest once I played the game. Because despite the fact that this new storyline continued to develop itself over the course of Rebirth, Every single aspect of the original game that was important to me was retained here nonetheless. The characters, their charm, and all the things they encounter and experience on their incredible journey, it was all here, none of it was sacrificed, and in fact, so much of it was improved upon and just made even more special than I could have ever imagined. And ultimately, you guys, that's my greatest commendation for Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. The fact that it surpassed everything I thought a remake of the original game's second act could look like. For years, even before the remake project was officially announced in 2015, I would imagine from time to time what a fully realized 3D interpretation of Final Fantasy VII's overworld could look like, and what a remake could look like within this world. But none of what I'd imagined came close to what Final Fantasy VII Rebirth ended up being. And for that, there's no way that I wouldn't give this game a must-play masterpiece rating as part of my review system around these parts. But here's the thing, right? As usual, the final score that I like to give a game is one that comes from an objective place. If I were to distance myself for a second from my personal feelings and not view this game through the lens of someone whose favorite game of all time is Final Fantasy VII, then this is a game that I would nevertheless redonkulously recommend. The reason why my official score for Final Fantasy VII Rebirth isn't the highest must-play masterpiece one is because in order for a game to get that from me objectively, any and all flaws that it has should be nigh imperceptible. And Rebirth is a game that while absolutely exceptional and presents an experience beyond my wildest dreams, still has a couple of lowlights that you'll definitely feel the weight of as you play. But I have no doubt that going forward, Business Unit 1 is going to continue to further refine and perfect the formula as they've clearly been doing since the beginning of this project, considering the insane rampant quality and ambition from Remake to Rebirth, with the latter patching up and iterating upon Remake in a myriad of ways. And I say this acknowledging that Remake itself was still a phenomenal game. So yes, I would still strongly encourage you to play through the Remake continuity, and by extension, Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. Get in on this, guys. It's the best Final Fantasy media out there right now, and I hope that Square Enix continues to take notes from this game moving forward, not just for Part 3, but for the franchise as a whole because they have truly peaked here with this game. Everyone involved in the making of the original Final Fantasy VII and these new games as part of the remake series have proven time and time again the amount of love, care, and passion they have for the games and its fans. And I cannot wait to see what they cook with the epic conclusion to this saga once it comes around in 2027, just in time for the 30th anniversary of Final Fantasy VII, maybe? Hopefully? We'll see, we'll see. I, I hope they take all the time they need with the third and final game and that we get to experience something truly remarkable as a result of that. And when it drops, you can be sure that I'll be back as usual for my stream through of the game, as well as my inevitable review of it. I'm not going anywhere. Thank you all so much for watching today's review video, folks. At this point, I may or may not have already started my NG Plus replay of Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, where we're going to be going through the entire game again on hard mode and 100%ing it by getting all of its achievements slash trophies. So if you do want to catch all the episodes of both my first playthrough and this new game plus one of Rebirth, then be sure to check out my second YouTube channel. That's Irritable Archives, linked in the description below. And if you want to catch me playing through the game live, then pop on by twitch.tv slash irritableindian, also linked in the description. 
Would love to catch you guys there on air. But until the next one, folks, stay happy, stay healthy, stay positive, and as always, keep on keeping on.